Yeah, uh, this is part three of my testimony. Uh, in case y'all missed part one or it didn't get get on here, uh, I've been having problems with this thing. You know, it's you know, just give me a problem. But anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, anyway, this is the rest of my testimony, part three. Uh, you know, when I was I met guy. I guess, let's start it all off at eight years old, okay? When I was eight years old, I went to a Christian school. Me and my brother, we went to a Christian school, right? So, uh, you know, and I kind of, I was a real wild child when I was there. and I, I, get, I got in trouble in class, you know. I throwed paper at the kids. Uh, I got in fights. I got in fusses with the teachers. Uh, you know, I just didn't, I was just not, I was born hyper, hyper, uh, hyperactive, okay, with ADD, tension deficit disorder, now I'm bipolar, now I'm diagnosed with bipolar, so, uh, you know, uh, and I just was not a very good student, uh, my teachers, you know, they used to, uh, Man, I would get paddlings left and right. Uh, you know, me and my brother, we would, you know, we'd get together and we had this little thing going where we would, you know, we would just, uh, you know, we would we'd distract the teachers as much as we could. I mean, we was just, uh, uh, you know, and I just, uh, I would do things. They would tell me to do things in class, you know, and then I'd be like, you know, knowing better, knowing I shouldn't do it, I did it anyway because I thought it was fun. You know, I thought that kind of lifestyle was fun, you know. Uh, because at an earlier age, you know, I was into, into heavy metal music, man. I loved, I mean, you know, Metallica, Kiss, Iron Maiden, ACDC, uh, Rat, U2, I mean, REM, I mean, all, all these different bands, man. They were They were my idols, you know. And the music kind of what led me to the way I acted, you know, uh, you know, because I would wear it on my, I would wear the stuff on my body, you know. I had, I mean, at one time I growed out my hair. I had hair probably all the way down to here, you know. And uh, I was just, uh, you know, I gained a lot of weight back in. I probably didn't weigh 50 pounds. Uh, I'm nearly 40 years old now, but back then I was eight years old. But anyway, that's a, that's another story. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I was just I was a wild child, man. You know, I loved, uh, and I hope this is a testimony. Uh, I, I hope I'm not getting off of where I don't want to be. But anyway, uh, you know, it's just. Uh, you know, I love that, that kind of lifestyle, you know, just being mean and fussing and carrying on and fighting. You know, when I was a kid, that's what I loved, you know. And I'm not a fighter. Later on, I'll prove this to you. But when I was a kid, I was just very wild, very, very wild. I was hyperactive. I was on uh, Ritalin medication. Uh, I was diagnosed with uh, with hyperactive hypertension, hypertension. Uh, ADD and you name it, but uh, but I met God at eight years old. That's the first time I met God. The first time when I, I was eight years old, and uh, He just come through me through other people. You know, I mean, my teacher, she says, uh, you know, Chris, she says you, you know, you're you're wild. You know, I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to live a Christian life. And it was Miss Maddox was her name. And, uh, you know, you need to go in there and let, uh, let the pastor pray for you. And I, I ain't going to get no prayer. I don't believe in God. I just, that stuff ain't for me, you know. That's what I said. But I went on in there. She made me go in there. And I'm glad she did because it changed me for a little while, you know. I started seeing things differently than I used to see, you know. And uh, I just... Uh, you know, I started acting different. People was wondering what happened to what happened to him. He's different. They couldn't believe that I had changed. But I see, I changed for the better. Okay. But then later on in life, when I was fifteen, you know, I backslid on the Lord, 
And I got back into it again. I started, man, you know, this is middle school. This is public school now. I mean, we're not we're not in Christian school no more. So I, you know, I was in public, right? Middle school. Well, back then it was intermediate in my day. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I, you know, back then I was I wanted to be liked. I wanted the girls to like me. You know, I wanted people to like me. You know, so I had to quit living for God for a little bit in order to do that. You follow what I'm saying? I hope this is making sense to people out there. So I started changing the way I was acting. I started wearing, you know, like the little rock and roll buttons, you know, like with, with, with concert, with rock concerts on it. I had went and done my hair up, you know, changed my hair color. I didn't weigh but 150 pounds, you know. I mean, I was, you know, I was I was the guy back then, okay. I wore leather jackets. I, uh, I took knives to school. I mean, I, uh, I was a big rush, ACDC, Metallica, you name it. And I had all the buttons, you know, and I would trade my lunch money for those rock buttons, okay? And uh, it was, <laughs> I would actually trade the money I'm supposed to go eat with for a rock button because my mama then wouldn't allow me to have it in the house. You got to keep in mind, they were strong Christians. They didn't believe in rock and roll music. They didn't believe in the lifestyle that I was living. They just didn't believe in it. And even though I believed in it, you know, I wanted to keep doing what I was doing because I loved it. I loved it, man. I loved talking dirty. I loved grabbing women's tails. I loved the, the things that you weren't supposed to do. Uh, you know, but, but my point is, uh, I lived that all the way up. And at 18, you know, I got drunk at 16, but I, I got... I got a little more into drinking at 18, and then I did it from 18 to 21, like I told you in part one, in case y'all missed it. Okay, I go, I went into detail with that part. But anyway, I was just a wild child, man, and, and in, in the times that I did know God, I didn't live for him long. And I'm going to tell you why, man. Uh, I've got a scripture to back that up. Uh, i got to go find it. But, uh... Uh, this scripture says now I want y'all to listen this scripture says in Mark 4 and 17 and they have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward and afterward when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Okay, what that scripture means to me is, is it, is it because of the word, because of God, we are offended. When persecution, when people talk about us and things are happening around us, for the word's sake, we turn away. See what I'm saying? I turned away because I wanted to live life the way I wanted to live it, not the way God wanted me and intended me to live it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So I hope that helped y'all. Uh, but I'll be honest with you. Uh, anyway, that that's that's my you know that's what the way it was for me. Okay, now this last time after I you know like I told you in my first one, if y'all missed it. Uh, I drank all the way up, man, to October 10th of 2011, okay? I quit for two and a half months, and then the first of the year, New Year's Eve, I went back out. I, I'd had like almost three months, okay? I went back out, guess what? Went downtown, got drunk, played around with the, you know, you know how it is. Anyway, the next day I drank again, and I quit again for a little bit. And I'm going to tell you why. Because just what I just read to you is because of the word's, faith, word's sake, immediately we are offended. And offended means it's turning away. Okay? That's turning away because of the word. Alright? And so, uh, the point I'm getting at is, that's why I kept relapsing. That's why I kept going back to the things of the world. Because... The word was not in me, and I'm telling you, if the word is not in you, you're not gonna you're not gonna do what God wants you to do. 
And it says also, you know, in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not forth but to steal, steal, kill, and destroy people. And we got to be grounded in the word, okay? But this is how I met God for the, for the you know, this last time, okay? This last time I met God, and it was a voice. It was just almost like a voice, man. This last time I was in my bed crying, I said, God, please, I'm tired of this life. I'm tired of relapsing. I'm tired of doing the things that I used to do, God. I'm tired of living like I used to live, Lord. Show me the way, God. Show me the way. What do you, What is my purpose in life, God, for the last time? What What do you want me to do, God? What is your will for me? What is your will for me to other people? And I meant it with everything, man. I'm telling you, uh, God really, if he never came to me, he came to me <laughs> that night. <coughs> and, uh, I don't know how to explain it, guys. I just know that, it, you know, it was the Lord, you know. Uh, it couldn't be the devil. Because the Bible also says, James 1, 8, 9, 10, that, the, that, that God, does, can, God does not tempt anyone. Uh, that man is tempted when he is drawn away into the lust and enticed. See, God cannot tempt no one, okay? You need to understand this. But then when men have, it says in 10, that when men are tempted, they are drawn away. And then when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. This is in James 1. I can't remember the, the scriptures. Uh, I got them wrote down, but I'd have to go check them. But it's in James chapter 1. Uh, 1, I want to say 8 through 10. I may be wrong. Let me get my Bible. Okay, this is, it's in John, it's in James chapter 1, 13, 14, 15. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When and then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, and sin is the way the things that you do of this world, okay? I'll go into that later. I'll I'll do that another time. I'm about to run out of time here. But but I want to say the prayer for people who are listening. Uh you know, uh, all you got to do is ask God to come into your heart. This is how you do this, okay? You say, God, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for everything I've done. Show me your will for me. Let your person, uh, let your, what's my purpose, God? And let him reveal himself in the spirit to you and show you the way. Get rid of everything that's in your mind. Okay, this this hindering you. You got to bind Satan, which is the enemy, which is the world, the people in the world. You got to bind all that stuff and ask God to deliver you. And you do that by just just crying, just cry out to Him and give Him your all. And people, this is my last testimony, and I wish everybody the best. I, you know, I mean, uh, now I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna do some more preaching on here. If you want to check me out, okay? I'm going to do some more things on here. And I've got to go and uh, I hope this helps you. Y'all have a good day. And I hope you get saved and I hope you live this thing out. Live the life of Christ. Let him be your all because he is all. And he is the answer for this world. He is the answer for everything. The economy, uh for the people doing wrong in the streets, the life. He's the answer for the president. He's the answer for everything. He is God. He is almighty. He loves you, and he wants a, a relationship with you. Okay? So give it to him today, please. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Hope it helps you.